When I was a kid, I'd see my neighbors, they would get out of jail and he did tattoos on the front porch. And he would tattoo everybody. And I always thought it was really cool. And I realized that you can make money from doing that. And uh, I wanted to be an artist when I was a kid, but I didn't realize you could actually make a living doing that kind of thing. And then uh, my friend asked me if I knew where to get any tattoos or who could do tattoos. And so I lied and said I could do tattoos. And then uh, I tattooed him and it came out horrible. And we went to a shop to buy a real tattoo machine. And the guy saw what I was doing and said I should come back and I should learn. And I was like 15, I think, about 15. And so I just went back on my skateboard every day. And, you know, they pretty much just told me to leave, but I stuck around and it ended up working out. When I was a kid, before I tattooed, I wanted to do cartoons. And then I wanted to do caricatures of SeaWorld. And I don't know why SeaWorld, I think that was because the only time that I was the only person I ever saw doing them. And I like, I thought it was awesome. You can get paid to make fun of people. And it was like super cool. And then I talked to a friend of mine who used to do that and he said, you get paid like nothing. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad I didn't do that. Cause I would be totally screwed if I did that. Like if I could be a cartoonist and not like Looney Tunes cartoons, but like if I could have made like Squidbillies, that would be like my life goal is to make like a cartoon that was like Squidbillies. My influences are anybody the tattoos, like they don't have other options. Like people that, that hustle and people that grind and people that are actively trying to get it. You know, people people that, that don't think you should do one tattoo a day. You know, uh, and mostly people inspire me. You know, other tattooers, but not exactly like artwork wise, but just, you know, personality wise, like how they, how they do stuff. Um, you know, that's the kind of thing that inspires me. And I like, uh, I like seeing it when people who are young, who, who are like grinding, who are getting it, who are drawing and painting and doing flash like that, that inspires me, you know. I listen to a lot of rap, so it's like, uh, rap and hip hop is based around people making something from, from nothing, and I think that's why I like that. I just try and do stuff that I thought was like tough, cool yeah. tattoos. Not exactly traditional, but, you know, maybe like Neo kind of stuff. You know, I like, uh, I like anything that is like bold and, and, and tough and hard tattoos. Like I don't, I I don't like I don't like really soft tattoos. So I guess I specialize in like old neo traditionalish kind of stuff. I learned how to tattoo in a biker shop, so that's all they tattooed. You know, like I didn't even I didn't even know that you could tattoo without outlines. You know, and then when I heard about it, like I didn't it it, it was foreign to me because you're supposed to outline it, and then color it, and it's supposed to be cool when you're done. I use every kind of ink. Uh, like I like Starbright, you know. Eternal is cool. Fusion's cool. Dynamics cool, you know. Uh, I'm not like strictly a one ink kind of dude. Like I don't really, especially on any kind of tattoo product, I rarely buy into the hype of it, you know. Uh, I've used a rotary maybe once or twice, you know. But as far as needles and tubes and, and ink and all that stuff, I get it all from Kingpin. You know, I like Kingpin's needles. I like their service. You know, I like that, uh, you know, they support a lot of people that otherwise wouldn't get support in tattooing, you know, and they, they've always supported me, and they sell my sketchbooks and Flash and, and, and everything like that, and I think they're a really good company that supports tattooing. I have a couple machines. I like uh, Clean Rock One machines from Las Vegas. They're, you know, I, I personally like them, and they're just built straight forward. Like, they work good, and... There, there's like no fancy stuff. Like I like really basic machines. The first machine I ever had was a Hux Balding Puma and I still think that was probably one of the best machines ever made. You know, I like the most normal, straightforward, goes up and down machine. Like whoever, whoever it's made by, that's what I prefer. What's the craziest thing? I tattooed a flying dick under some chick's boob once. It came out really good, I was really surprised. And it was like Friday the 13th tattooing, which is, it's like, I feel like Friday the 13th tattoos are like the best tattoos in the world because people that would normally never get retarded tattoos are ultimate, for some reason, ultimately open to getting any kind of shit because it's $13, you know what I mean? And like realistically, like I can't make a living off $13, but for one day a year, like it's definitely worth it. And I drew a sheet and just had ridiculous shit and uh, I had a dick with wings, and she was like, I wanna get that, and I was like, 
fuck yeah, are you serious? And she was like, totally. And I was like, where do you want to get it? She's like, underneath my boob. And I was like, there's no fucking way this bitch is serious. And so, like, I did it, and she totally, like, you'd think she'd be, like, laughing or, like, taking pictures, right? She was totally dead serious. Like, she was getting a real ass tattoo, and nobody was looking, and just got this dick and was like, thank you very much, and left. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? You know what I mean? And this thing was like, like I put thought into this drawing because I was like, no one's ever gonna get this thing, right? So it's like kind of like mostly anatomically correct. It's not like a cartoon. Like it was pretty legit, you know, all the way around. But just her demeanor. I think I'm just gonna get that dick. Thank you. Can we do that real fast? And so I did it, and she left, and that was incredible. I went through a series where I tattooed only for like two weeks, only superstitious animals for some reason. I did it across the U.S. even. I did like a chupacabra, Nessie, Bigfoot. I did aliens. Uh, I haven't done a Yeti. And uh, I haven't done. I don't know what the fuck another one is. But if I could do Bigfoot tattoos all day, I'd probably do that. I see people, especially on the internet, always post stuff and it shows like a guy like in a suit and then he has a bunch of tattoos and it shows him like as a lawyer, right? And I was like, who gives a shit? Like, is, was there, is there really people that are like, no, he has tattoos. You know, I would never have him represent me. You know, like, I don't, I, I guess that's a thing. I don't know where, you know what I mean? But, like, I get, people that didn't get tattoos are getting tattoos now, you know? Like, I've tattooed moms, and I've tattooed people that, that are doctors and people that work in the medical profession. And, like, I don't... You know, I don't see it, but I don't, I don't, I don't like that, uh, that people glorify, like, bad tattooing. I would tell somebody who wanted to get into tattooing that if you can't adjust to the lifestyle of doing that, then maybe it's something you shouldn't do and that you shouldn't get into tattooing because you want to be, you know, I guess famous because it hasn't been until recently that you could be like famous being a tattooer like before then you were just a tattooer like that was the goal like it was just it seemed a lot more pure and I feel like uh, I see a lot of people I tattoo a lot of kids and a lot of a lot of younger people people that are older than me learning how to tattoo and they're like what should I do and I'm like you should work to death because if you don't like it's never gonna happen you know, I think you should wake up at 5 a.m. and draw till noon and then take a break and then draw more because that's what it takes. To, with so many good tattooers, you know, you're pretty much jumping in a shark tank. I like the shows for the most part, you know, like I think I think they're interesting. I think, uh, I think some of them are a little out there, you know. I think that it's really hard to, uh, you know, let's say judge like one dude against another and they're doing different stuff, you know? I would like to see a show that had like the best dudes in their field tattooing their field. A lot of people have negative, they're like, you know, you're making a mockery of, of my industry and my profession. You know, I don't see it as, I see it as like a, a, another avenue for tattooers to do better. And, uh, you know, with everything, there's, you know, there's two sides of every sword. You know, why would you, if you could be a tattooer and you could, go on TV and you can make a career for yourself that coincides with tattooing, why would you not want to do that? You know what I mean? That's like the baking shows, like people that got famous for making cakes. I don't think anybody in the cake industry was butthurt about that. You know what I mean? Everybody was stoked because it's, it's helping everyone, you know? Uh, I think it's educational to a point because it puts tattooing in, in, a, in a way bigger spectrum of people, you know? Like I've seen people that I've tattooed because they saw tattooing on a TV show and it made him understand it just a little bit better, which helped me out because I tattooed him, you know? And maybe I wouldn't have never done that if they had never seen that, you know? I, I don't, on the other hand, I don't support, you know, tattooers being put on a pedestal just because of that, you know? Like, if you're just a normal tattooer, like, I don't think you should get high fives because you tattooed on TV, you know? But there, there's a good amount of awesome people on it, man, and like, just with everything else, there's a good amount of bad people on it, and that's just, it's up to you how you want to use that, you know, but you can't fight progress, I know that.